Hi there, Phil Pendlebury here. Hope you're having a large day. I'm going to do a little video today that's been requested by a few people about how to build up an orchestration in the Hollywood Orchestrator, which is part of Opus from East West. Okay, so I've got Cubase 11 open and I've got East West Opus here in front of me and I've loaded up Hollywood Orchestrator uh, with an empty preset so there's nothing in it at all at the moment and this was the idea was to build up something from scratch uh, because the last video I did was just sort of very roughly showing how it works and I don't think there's many videos that actually show how to build things up uh, from scratch so let's have a go so to save messing around I've just quickly played a few chords in on the piano which I'll play you first so let's just have a listen to those set the tempo to 100 BPM and I've just played in C as usual just a few chords quantize them all so they're all perfect lengths apart from the very last one here which I'll explain when we get there so just have a quick listen to these very random chords All right, so that's uh, Addictive Keys, by the way, with a little bit of reverb, a little bit of post-processing going on, which I guess I will uh, show you quickly what I do. This is not what I normally have on my uh, mix bus, um, but I've got um, Pro, Pro R on the, a little bit of reverb um, for both, actually. And then I've got my Townhouse, which is usually my usual bus compressor. New Gen, which sort of takes out uh, the monofilter takes out some of the bottom end from the sides. Uh, GW Mix Centric just adds a little bit of sparkle, which I quite like, even though it's just a one knob. Uh, I think it's really useful. And then uh, currently I'm using the BX limiter just, just to bring up the gains a little bit. Uh, but that's not really important, but just in case uh, you wanted to know, you know exactly what was going on. So let's get into it. So I've got this, I've got this, um, this chord sequence which is pretty plain and pretty boring. And what I've tried to do here, just for the sake of this video, is stick to groups of four notes, even you know where the, some of the notes change quickly, there's still four notes playing at once. So let's chuck that over there somewhere and uh, let's get on with it. So first thing I've done, obviously, is I've already copied this over into the Opus instrument. And I've got the Opus instrument load it up. So let's build up some little orchestration and what I'm going to do is maybe you know kind of an ostinato -y kind of thing. Let's just see what happens. We'll start with the strings and we'll start with a bass. So as you can see here we've got the strings selected. There's percussion, brass, woodwinds. So we'll select the strings and as you can see we've got slots for various instruments. So we want bass. Now, we won't find bass in any of these top slots because they go kind of in, in a logical order. So the basses are at the bottom, which kind of makes sense to me. So what I'm going to do, let's, put, let's just put a bass in. Uh, shall we go for a staccato bass and see how it sounds? So straight away, when I play this, we need to choose which notes the bass is going to play. All right, so we've, we've put a staccato bass sound there. Now, if I play this, nothing will happen at the moment. You can see I'm clicking those notes there and there's no feedback. Um, and if you just quickly press on the keyboard here, you can see why, uh, because the bass doesn't play in that register. So here we have the octave button. So we'll move that. I think there should do. And let's just try that. Yep. 
So that's definitely in the bottom area of the bass. And as you can hear, what it's doing is it's playing the lowest note. Right, that's too low, so let's just go up an octave. So you can see it's choosing, because I've said here lowest, it's choosing the lowest note. out of those chords and playing them. That's nice and simple, isn't it? All right, so maybe we should uh, just embellish the chords a little bit before we carry on. So I'm gonna put, let's go for, um, uh, let's go for, yeah, just a normal legato. No, actually let's not. Let's go for a sustained cello and we'll tell this to play all notes so that you can hear what, what's going on. All right, so here we go again. So you get the idea? That's playing all the notes, including the one that the bass is playing. So, we want to make that a little bit more interesting and what I'll do is I'll just pull the volume down a little bit. Let's try taking the octave down on the cello. That's actually quite nice as it is, isn't it? I mean, you can see, you'll see while I'm building this up, you'll see that if you really wanted to turn this into a, a proper piece, you could, you know, use individual elements of the orchestration that you're building up in the end and it's very easy to mute the sections, mute individual bits, of course you can automate all that as well. So all right let's just leave it at that for now and we'll put some viola. Let's go again with the sustain and this time we'll choose the middle two notes. All right so let's hear that. So just to double check, let's uh, solo the violas, make sure I've got the right one. This sometimes confuses me, the, the order of where the solo buttons are, they're actually right next to the name but then the volume is below and sometimes you jump to the volume above. It's a little bit confusing. Well, it is for my little brain. So, okay, moving on quickly, because I don't want to make this video too long and I want to get to the interesting stuff as quick as possible. So let's have a listen to what I've done with the violas. You can see it's playing the centre two notes there because I've picked middle two. All right, and okay, we don't need to build up every single string part. Let's choose a violin and we'll go for a staccato violin because I'm going to do something with this in a minute. So the violin, I want it to play the, well, you guessed it, the top note. So I'm going to solo that. And let's just hear if I've got it in the right area. So play the G sharp and the B. So let's take that up an octave. And down in volume. Okay. So that's pretty clear, isn't it? So we've basically built up a little section there, although the top violin and the bass are only playing single hits, the uh, viola and the, and the celli, or the cellos, are playing a sustained part. The middle two notes for, this, for the cellos, and, uh, sorry, for the, for the viola, and the cellos playing everything. Violin's playing the very top note, bass is playing the very, bottom note, which is basically a C and then a G. Okay, so quick listen to everything together. Hopefully this will work. So 
So you're thinking, all right, well, that's a bit boring like that, isn't it? Um, you know, those two little staccato notes. So here's where things start to get a little bit interesting. So let's start again with the bass. I'll solo it. And what we're going to do is build up a little kind of arpeggio or ostinato. So we click the little button here and you'll see that we've got a little kind of key editor. Uh, first thing to do is to turn that on, which I often forget. And we'll get to this button in a minute because that's also quite important. So we've got a little key editor. And here we've set, I've set this to eighth notes. So it's quite long. Not going to do anything too clever here because I just want to get through the principle of it. Let's just draw in some notes. In fact, let's start again. And you'll see what happens now when we play this. Now you can see instead of the note, instead of the note starting when each note is triggered, we're actually getting these notes played and it's playing the lowest note because that's where I've put my little markers here. So what do you think would happen if I do something like this? As you can see, let's add a little bit more velocity on there. Yeah, so we get in step one, which is obviously this. And if we go to step two, we'll get bum 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 there and so on, but it'll repeat on every beat. So let's just play that. Yeah. And Let's add the fourth note. Those notes were too quiet. So we'll just make them all the same length. And we'll delete this one. And let's just make that little run go back down again. Something like that. Whoops. So that's the rubber tool, which will rub that note out. OK, let's play that. Okay, so you get the point. Now, obviously, that really isn't ideal because it's probably not what the bass would do. You wouldn't have it running all these notes. So we've given an example. Now let's try and do something a little bit more realistic. I'm going to change the note grid here to quarter notes. And definitely we want the bass to play the root note. Uh, let's say twice. So how's that going to sound? Two, three, four. Okay, so let's just have a listen to everything together there. All 
All right. It's not superb, but it'll do to get the point across. So let's do something similar with the violins. So here we go. Again, pencil. Turn it on first. Pencil tool. And we've still got eight notes. Now for violins, maybe, 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 yeah, maybe eight, eight notes will be okay. Let's have a, let's have a listen. So we'll start higher up here and do something a little random. Now you can change as well the number of steps. So if I just wanted to repeat this pattern here, over and over again, I could change this to one, and then we've just literally got one step. That will make things very easy. Um, but I, I want it at four. So unfortunately, it didn't undo itself there, did it? So let's try all that again. Let's put it all in again. We'll start on step four, and we're going to kind of go down to the bottom, and then maybe we should have a quick listen to this while we're checking it. Actually, actually, that's quite nice like that. So why don't we leave, just leave it like that? It doesn't have to play the entire length of the, of the thing. Let's have a listen to all that together now. The reason I'm having to unmute manually, by the way, I'm going to edit this out of the video, but I keep pressing the uh, play button. And as I was saying, having Opus always on top means that it's taking the key commands. It's a little bit annoying, but there you go. Right, let's have a listen. Okay, so one more thing before we move on to adding um, another instrument. Let's have a quick look at the cellos here and see if we can make those a little bit more interesting, but without using um, any of this. If I click here, turn that off, if I go to the, that part, click there. Now, what will happen if we play nothing at all? So what if I were to just draw in the cellos going all the way across? Let's try that. So as you can see, it's doing what it was doing originally. Now the reason I've turned this part on for this purpose is because you can then use draw in some modulation. CC1. And as you know, modulation will affect the velocity of the instrument, or it should do. Let's hope it works. And there's a little slider there that enables us to magnify. Right, so let's try that. Let's make that, yeah, let's leave it, leave it like that and see how that sounds.
Mm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not over keen on the on the violin bit. Uh, maybe it would have been nicer to. I don't want to waste too much time um, with this. That's the only thing. I don't. You know, I want to keep this kind kind of video short and concise. And I'm sure many of you that have already um, got this far in are probably already switched, thinking of switching me off and saying, right, I'm going to go and do this myself. So what I'll just try with the violins, let's just try simple. I do like those two notes at the top, so let's give that a go. Right, one more time. <laughs> Okay, so do you feel, all right, despite the fact that it's not really, you know, super nice and musical, um, you know, it's one of those things, there's a bit of potluck really involved here. I could have ended up with a really good result or something not great, but at least we're getting the point across. But um, one thing I feel about that is that those violins sound a little bit late, and that's going to happen. That's the way these libraries work. The timings are sometimes going to be a little bit out due to the attacks of the strings and so on. It's not, it's not too bad, but we'll use that as an example here to show the other little area, which is this. Now this one will give you a maximum and a minimum uh, dynamics. So if you wanted it to be exactly the same volume the whole way through, you just set these both to the same if you need that. Uh, but the other one is the track delay. So again, we probably should have done this from the start and maybe you would, it depends. What I tend to do with these is I'll build them up and then I'll bounce them to audio and then I can move them around in audio however I want rather than using uh, the track delays over here. Uh, but the other way to do this would be like this. So we'll play this and we'll move the whole violin part just back in time a little bit. Yeah, that's a bit better. So you'll find, like, if, for instance, we put the click on here, everything's going to sound very out of time. So, and again, there's a few ways around that. In Cubase here, you can put a negative track delay. I've done another uh, little video or an article on that at some point. It's quite a simple thing. You just uh, adjust the track delay here uh, and push it uh, backwards, um, not forwards push it backwards. Backwards being that way, <laughs> although it's kind of forwards into, I don't know. Anyway, you know what I mean. Um, but what we should probably do here is you'd have the click on and you would go through each instrument and you would bring them into time with the click by using the track delay on uh, the Hollywood Orchestrator. That's probably the best way to do that. What I tend to do, like I said earlier, is I tend to just bounce, bounce the whole thing, once it sounds nice as a unit, I'll bounce it all as audio and then I can move it around a little bit and I can also draw some other curves in and so on. Right, let's move on. Let's just add some more little embellishments to try and get this sounding a little bit more interesting. So, I think what might be nice here is actually to change this bass just to a static instrument uh, because the movement at the top is kind of getting in the way, although the timings are clashing a little bit as well, which is my fault for rushing. So we'll just turn that off, put that back to sustained bass and see how that sounds. I'm still not happy with that violin, and although this is only a demo, I still want to get it a little bit nicer. I think it just needs to be slower, because the whole thing's a bit of a ploddy kind of... Um, the whole thing's a bit of a plod. Oh, by the way, yeah, obviously you can add two notes, so there it will play two notes at the beginning.
And uh, as we get to the end there, you, you realise why I put that uh, little stop. Right, we need to crack on because this is taking far too long and it shouldn't take this long. If I was doing this without trying to explain it all, I'd have either given up by now and started with a different you know, approach or I would have finished. So one more listen. Uh, the reason that I'm quite keen on getting this a bit nicer is because I'm going to, all right, we'll do that there. I'm going to copy this. So we copy that little ostinato part there or the little arpeggio, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, I'm going to copy and then I'm going to go over to the woodwinds and we'll put a high flute which is also going to ah, I need to turn it on and hopefully if I've got this right we just click paste and the flute should now follow that violin, which I always think sounds really nice. Okay, that's all right. Back to the uh, woodwinds. And let's do something in the mid area, let's say with clarinets, just a nice little ploddy. Um, yeah, a little ploddy just to keep the rhythm going. So clarinets, again, we need to turn on. I want the clarinets to play the middle two notes and Let's just do something along the lines of this. Again, solo it so that we can tell what it's doing. Yeah, there's two notes very close together there, but let's see how that sounds. Okay. Okay, so let's try adding some percussion. I've got the uh, felt hit short here, although that doesn't matter because as you'll see when we get into editing, uh, you can choose the articulations here, although I can't read some of these for some reason. But uh, so I want to put in a, a hit, a short hit at the beginning. So let's just have, make sure that's working. All right, so I've set up some percussion here. As you can see with the percussion, it's slightly different. Um, you get the choice of articulation. So all I want is one hit every two bars. So we've got that set. Let's go Right, okay And let's, um, let's just finish off um, with, let's see what we've we got here. The harps are lovely. 
they're all lovely. To be honest, you could fill the whole rack up and you'll end up with some amazing stuff. I just want a little French horn fanfare kind of scenario. So I think the French horns, where are they? Are they up at the top? Yep. Let's get to six French horns. I want a crescendo. Actually, you know what? Sustain Mark Art. Oh, let's try that. So once again, get rid of this from the previous area. Then you're going to see the French horns area. Then turn it on and then show it again. OK, so here's the French horns. And what I'm going to do is instead of putting them at the start this time, what we'll do is um, have them playing a little bit later on. And I want those to be playing two notes. So we will go for, let's go back to quarters. We'll leave that at two bars. Right. And we'll go here and here like that. And let's have a quick listen to that. Right. Finally, we'll move over to uh, where are we? Two trombones, and we'll just put put those in sustain, and we'll have them playing the lowest two notes. So this is irrelevant now. Then it's not doing the the trombones aren't going to be doing any uh, of this. They're just going to literally play the whole of the two notes there in sustain. Uh, I will quickly solo those out. OK, so the two trombones are in. I think the final thing now really would be to just quickly go back to the um, bass and change that actually back to how it was to more of a kind of staccato-y uh, thing just to give the whole thing uh, a little bit of rhythm. Um, I've still got, I think this is, I think it's still there so all I need to do is turn it on. Um, so let's just check that. So as you can see, selecting a note, like these two high ones, I don't want those to be as loud as the others, so you select them and just take the velocity down and you can see the little velocity uh, curve or line as it is. Right, let's hear the whole thing.
Okay, so we're just about done there uh, for this purpose of this video anyway. Uh, so let's just have a quick listen through the whole thing. And um, meanwhile as well, we can have a quick look at the mixer, uh, which you can see is pretty obvious here. And don't forget that you can use these keys to mute the individual sections as well. Um, so for example, that would mute the woodwinds, that would mute the brass and so on. So if we wanted to, uh, let's say, just start off the whole thing with with strings only, you can use these key commands or, or uh, hotkeys or you can use these key switches uh, down you know on the keyboard here so for example now I've just muted everything except the strings and we can bring Yeah, okay, so there we go. That's uh, basically it. Um, there was a few problems there which I've cut out of the video uh, because I kept pressing the start, the space bar, uh, just like this, to, to, start the, um, to start Cubase. And I had the uh, opus uh, always on top. Uh, which means it steals the focus of the spacebar sometimes, so I was muting things and unmuting things that I didn't mean to. Now, just as a last little experiment, uh, let's just go to the preset browser and load up one of the factory-made um, presets, because some of these are really nice. I'm not going to go through them all, because I'm sure you've heard them, uh, but let's just say for an example um, on those chords that I've used, um, Black Knight, which in this case is not the Deep Purple song. Okay, and uh, we wait in here for my disc to finish loading. You get an idea what this one's going to do. Let's have a listen to that. This one's Dark Hero. They're nice. They're really nicely done. Uh, but that wasn't the purpose of this video, of course, so I'm not going to dwell on it. But just one last thing. We'll just play one of the full ensembles for a, a movie let's try it let's try a, a mystique one so this shouldn't have any particular movement in it or anything like that and once again it's all loaded that was quick uh, here we go
Yeah. So you may have been using this and been mystified with how it's all put together. And it, yeah, it is a little tricky, but uh, I think with um, more practice and you know just going over and over it again a few times and getting familiar with the quirks of the whole thing, uh, it's a really useful tool. So that's all for now. I uh, hope this has made sense and uh, hope it's been worthwhile for some of you. If, uh, if it has, please uh, click the, the old thumb up there and uh, drop, us a, drop us a message in the comments. Thanks a lot and I'll see you all again soon. Super mega large.